What's going on everybody? Hope you all are having a good day and a wonderful New Year's. Today is the 1st of January 2023. We had a good night the last night celebrating and today we're going to continue forward with our Gods Unchained journey. Um, and where we left off last time, we were able to get into Twilight Shadow ranking. I believe that was rank 7 overall. And we're pretty much using the budget deck and a deck that we created off of some of the free cards that are, that are provided to you for playing the game, right? But... Now I wanted to do some more research. I want to do a little bit of homework because I did want to buy my very first deck. Um, and I have certain rules that I have to apply before I really get into any game. So, first off, first things first, did some basic info and research about the gods token, about these NFTs, about the market. And I'm actually quite surprised about a couple things. Uh, first off, the implementation that IMX has had um, and that Gods and Chain has allowed to pretty much have like third party websites start to be created to be able to make tools and make different uh, features available to the to the players just seems on point so i if you're a uh, gods unchained og you know this already you've already heard of uh gu dex and uh, token trove but for anybody that's new you're going to be following me here so gu dex is obviously let's jump on over to the web page gu dex is a uh, one of the uh, third-party tools that is provided to players or that is available for players and so what I did here is I went through it and I started to go through some of the meta we know that we were already working on building a war deck um, so I wanted to know hey what are the top war decks that are available that are competing in the highest rankings possible right so the very first one which seems to be the the strongest of the of the strongest within war seems to be a control war deck right and you can see some of the cards here um, some of these, you know, are obviously on the smaller side, Savage Strike, uh, Carnage Sweep. Uh, some of these we already have, you know, we were using the Devouring Blade in a couple of videos. Um, but then we have some of the big boys. This is why this uh, deck comes out to 2.6 ETH, which is $3,100 plus dollars, right? So some of the big ones, right? Uh, Therial the Fallen, I believe we got here almost $500 just for this one card. Obviously the end game win, win scenario for this deck. But you have another, a bunch of other popular ones. The Demi Demigorgons, the Pyramid Wardens, um, the Avatar of War. So pretty much as I'm going through this, what I'm trying to do is get an understanding of like, okay, we know that it's a control deck. We know that Clutch is the one who created it. Been watching some of his videos. A plus there. Highly recommended. Um, but I start to get an idea also about the prices. Like why are some of these cards worth more than others? Um, and at a very small basic level... Um, it's pretty much just coming down like we know to rarity scarcity and availability um, So some of these like for example the magic missile launcher is uh, A very rare card that came out in a very mini set promotional set I believe the ether box set when when uh, when that launched I believe about a year or two ago um, So some of these cards have been ex in existence for a while But very few players actually have their hands on them and obviously with the meta This is the reason why prices can continue to go up and down amongst other reasons, but we're gonna keep it basic for now. So we know that a control war deck is probably the number one deck right now with war, um, from what we've researched. Um, but we also came across aggro war, which is a little bit of what we were already doing with our starter deck and with the packs we already had. Um, this, this aggro war deck that has been pretty successful um, is much more budget friendly, okay? So we're looking at $40 here, of which I've already owned some of these cards. Um, but the staples here, obviously, the white fur guard um, being your your win condition at the end of the game. You're putting up a wall that all your minions are going to be protected behind, that you're going to be able to finish going face um, to your different opponents. Odie, which I hear a lot of comments back and forth. Some people say it's really good. It's obviously in a lot of war decks. Some people say that they don't think they get a lot of value out of it. You know, we'll see. We'll see how it goes with our playthroughs. Um, you know, Feral Shapeshifter. Here's one we were already talking about it in the other video. You know, I, I was trying to contemplate the importance of hidden and the and the and the amount of that roar damage of one that you're able to put on your enemies. Um, turns out it's being run in a lot of budget decks. Um, so I'm going to be playing around with that as well. Um, but so so what I wanted to do here is if I really was going to be creating such a big deck and put and putting in a large investment of about three thousand dollars, is that possible? Yes. But do I feel comfortable with doing that right now, just with the information that I've learned? Not just yet. So instead what I did is I went and I, I took the war deck, I took the aggro deck, 
and I went through a couple other decks that were created um, in GU decks, and I made a list of all the cards, the ones that were commonly repeated, um, and then I tiered them by, by price. And I favorited those on Token Trove. Okay, now Token Trove here that we've jumped over to, obviously another third-party marketplace. We're able to buy, sell, and trade your God's Unchained NFTs along with other gaming NFTs. Block Lords, I believe, is the second. In, the Block Lord Banners is second right now on the list. Um, so, as you can see here, these are the cards that I favorited. And I favorited them for this video, but also to go ahead and purchase. As you can see, a majority of these, you know, 20 cents for the Feral Shapeshifter. Um, 12 cents for the, right, the White Fur Guard, okay? You can see some of the prices here as we go down through the list. Wheatstone coming in at $2.16. Lead the Charge, $3.16. Um, what I pretty much did is I took that whole list that I created and I pretty much removed anything, any card that was over $15. This was just a way for me, me to be able to build a foundation within War so that I can later on pick and choose and adjust decks as meta changes um so i can have a good you know foothold inside the god wars uh, sp specifically so um when we look through this list some of the big ones Odie comes out here at 15 dollars and 60 cents um it was below 15 when i purchased it so it's gone gone up a little bit um some of the other legendary uh, legendaries over here hector the prince of troy for a dollar 15 you know the Eater of Bears over here for $1.26. Um, uh, the Damien Prince over here, $2.21. 20, My point is that I was going to go, when I totaled all these up, came out to about $100. Um, and I figured if I was going to put $100 into the game, I'm okay with that right now, ex exploring, experimenting, regardless of whether I know more information about you know the success of, of the developers of gods unchained and whether or not they're planning for the future or whether or not utility for the gods token is being taken um it's being discussed uh, for future use as well so i need to do more information before i drop a few eth into the game however i'm okay with spending a hundred dollars to just continue the journey and see where we're at and go from there um, so you, as you see, these are the favorited ones that we went ahead and purchased. Pretty much came out to a little bit less than $100. Um, and now that we've been playing for a while, we haven't been using all the cards we purchased. Um, this is pretty much the deck that I've constructed and been using so far. Um, that's gotten me all the way up to our Ruick Gold. Um, I actually just qualified um, and just made it up to that tier. Um, and I'm pretty much running here with all war cards. Of course, like I told you, when, when I made my purchase, I used all, I, I wanted to focus on all the war specific cards. I can look at some of the neutrals a little bit later as I tweak the deck or make changes or play different classes. Um, we could, you could already look at it here. My main win condition, obviously coming down to putting, uh, filling up the board, attacking early. We're doing a war, a war aggro deck. Um, Odie's in here making a big play. Commander Pyros is really helpful when you get into certain situations where I know I'm going to take damage. Um, the White Fur Guard just turns out to be a beast when you empower it uh, with the Protect. Um, and then I decided, and this wasn't on any of the war, aggro war decks that I saw, but I decided to include Soul Survivor. And I did this because I was playing a few games and I got to the very, very end and I have no board wipe. Um, so one, I know I need it. Two, I know this is an automatic win condition. If I'm playing this, the game is going to end one way or the other. Either I lose or I win. Um, so I have it on there for that reason. This is the game, you know, you can see we already have eight wins um, and we're pretty much 75%. As we're climbing the ranks, things are gonna get a lot harder. But, and I can already tell you, they are getting a lot harder because I barely make it into uh, the Auroric Gold rank, if I'm saying that right. And the very first match I come across is the Chosen One. Um, now, I've been watching YouTube videos, um, the Chosen One deck, I should say. Been watching videos, been doing research, and I keep hearing this, this card or strategy. I still am very unclear with it. Um, I'm hearing it over and over, but I haven't researched it um, at all. So I went into a game completely blind with this deck, um, and that's what we're going to jump over to now. So you can see one, how did I put this $100 deck, in this case $63, how did I put my $100 to use? And then how did I, how was I able to manage handling a new type of opponent that I haven't come across? Um, and we're going to go ahead and jump onto that video 
Before we do, though, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button if you're enjoying the content. I'm also doing a gaming uh, vlog series where we can just talk about some of the random thing that's coming across the entire industry. Uh, look forward to putting more content out there for y'all. So, hope you enjoy it. Let's jump on into the game.